Hello everyone, we are students of middle school in Hillwood College. As you know, learning is something that constantly changes. So, as a school, we have to adopt these new concepts, which is appropriate to meet the needs and demands of the 21st century. The concept learning by doing, which is based on student-centered education, is the most ideal way of learning lifelong skills. So, children will be actively explore the real world of problems and challenges through this new method of teaching learning, which is called project-based learning. So now we're going to start our presentations. Our math teacher gave us a target to prepare any kind of tangible objects under the topic of rectilinear plane figures for the grade 7 students in the middle school. Straight line segments is known as a polygon. This monkey puzzle is also not a polygon. Metma, can you find me another figure which is not a polygon? Yes, the clouds because they don't have straight line segments. Figures with lines intersected are not polygons. A polygon is a figure bounded by three or more straight line segments. Polygons with three sides is a triangle. Four sides is a quadrilateral, five sides is a pentagon, and six sides is a hexagon, a regular polygon. All sides equal in length and all sides equal in magnitude is known as a regular polygon. And that concludes our presentation. I'm Shehani. I'm Sayuli. I'm Manupri. And I'm Ben.
our group has prepared a board game named Replugger to revise the unit rectilinear plane figures. We have named it Replugger because it's based on rectilinear plane figures. RE for rectilinear, PLA for plane and GURE for figure. All together it's Replugger. So Viruddhi, how many players should be there to play this game? There should be at least 2 to 5 players to play this game. When the player rolls the dice, according to the number which the player gets, he or she should choose the question card. Isn't this our own creation? Yes, it is. We made this using A4 papers, used black, pink, black and purple. And cardboard too. And questions also. And we didn't forget to customize this using stickers. So, we have 40 questions. We have divided the 40 questions into 4 based on their difficulties. There are 4 colors. They are green, pink, yellow and blue. 10 to 1 to 10 is the easy level. 11 to 20 is the normal level, 21 to 30 is the hard level and 31 to 40 is the difficult level. So only, isn't this game hard so you should be careful when playing the hard and the difficult level. Yes, yes. Now, Onali and Rissanya are going to play the game. Good luck. Good luck. So I will draw the dice now. Five. What are the elements of a rectilinear plane figure? Uh, straight line segments. Angles. Oh yes, there are angles too. And sides. Yes. That's correct. So now only we will roll the dice again. One. So because she got the same number, she has to roll the dice again. Can you name two quadrilaterals? Square. Oh, square rectangle. Mm, yeah, that's correct. Hope you enjoy and learn something new. I'm Devi. I'm Resanya. I'm Vinudhi. I'm Imandi. And I'm Onari. We are from Great Seven. Thank you. rectilinear plane figures. In this puppet show, it is a, there is a classroom with three students and a teacher. The three students are Amelia, Daniela and Rose. The teacher is going to explain the lesson to them. Hope you enjoy. Good morning children. Good morning. Good morning teacher. Do you know what are we going to do today? Oh I know, rectilinear plane figures. Okay, what is a rectilinear plane figure? Hmm, 2D plane figures with uh, straight line segments which do not intersect are uh, rectilinear plane figures, right teacher? Yes. Can you name the figures on the board? Teacher, I can. It's a triangle, quadrilateral, pentagon and a hexagon. What are the special features of these figures? Oh teacher, as you can see, all of these figures have straight line segments that do not intersect. Also, all of them are closed plane figures. Hmm, correct. A closed plane figure bounded by three or more straight lines are called a polygon. Oh no, wait teacher, both of them are not polygons. Why is it? 
Well, teacher, in the first figure, more than three, three, uh, more than two straight line segments are meeting at the same point, and in the second figure, two straight lines are intersecting. Teacher, what is convex and uh, concave polygon? Teacher, I know convex polygons are polygons which don't have reflex angles, and I think concave polygons are polygons which do have reflex angles. Correct. Okay. Now let's move to the next topic. It's about regular and irregular polygons. Teacher, what are uh, regular and irregular uh, polygons? Regular polygon is equal in magnitude and all the sides are equal in length. So teacher, are irregular polygons polygons which don't have sides of equal length and angles which aren't equal in magnitude? Yes, correct Amelia. Okay children, we have reached the end of this lesson. So, good morning children. Good, good morning, morning and thank, thank you teacher. Have a nice day. And that is all for our project of rectilinear plane figures. Hope you understood and enjoyed. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about rectilinear plane figures. With the help of this soup, we are going to learn about polygons. And from this market, we are going to learn about regular polygons. And from this village, we are going to learn how to classify triangles according to its length. And from this treasure island, we are going to learn how to classify triangles according to its angle. So Sunli, can you explain me about polygons? So you can see this soon. So to first learn about a polygon, you must know what a polygon is. Okay, uh, what is a polygon? A polygon is a shape bounded by three or four straight lines. And if the lines uh, do not cross each other in the uh, lines, there are polygons. What are convex polygons? A convex polygon, if you want to join two points in a polygon, and that line you are going to connect is entirely inside the polygon that is a convex polygon. And what do you mean by concave polygons? If you want to join two points in a polygon and the line connecting them are enti not entirely outside, uh, inside the polygon, that is a concave polygon. Uh, if it's not a polygon, how can you identify it? Uh, if you can see that lines are crossing each other in the middle or the outside of the polygon, that is not a polygon. Okay, um, Aushan, can you explain me about regular polygons, please? Yes. Uh, first, we will we'll check the red bank. As you can see here, uh, a polygon with all sides equal in length and all angles equal in magnitude can be known as a regular polygon. Um, can you tell me some regular polygons? Yes. This is a regular polygon. This can be known as a quadrilateral. And this is a triangle. And this can be also uh, known as a regular polygon. Uh, I have heard there are uh, some shapes that are not regular polygons. What are they? And why they are not regular polygons? Yes. Uh, this, do you think this is a, a regular polygon? Yeah, maybe. No, because uh, this uh, angles are equal in magnitude, but the length is not uh, equal. Equal. So okay. it is not a regular polygon. Okay. If I take a rhombus, I think it's not a regular polygon, right? No, because uh, even though the sides are equal in length. Uh, the um, angles are not equal in magnitude, so it cannot be known as a regular polygon. Uh, but I have a question about circle. What about it? Yeah, circle is not a, a regular polygon or a polygon because it doesn't have straight lines or angles, so it cannot be known as regular polygon. Okay, thank you, Ashadi. Uh, Satini, can you please explain me about how to classify the triangles according to its length? 
There are three types of triangles that are classified according to the length of their side. And they are equilateral triangle, isosceles triangle, and scalar triangle. Okay, I can see a triangle, but only two sides of it are equal. Why is that? It is an isosceles triangle. A triangle of which two sides are equal in length is called an isosceles triangle. Uh, and I can see some scalar triangles, I think. There are scalar triangles, right? Yes, they are. A triangle of which three side, all three sides are unequal in length is called the scalar triangle. Okay, that means a equilateral triangle is a triangle with all three sides are equal, right? Yes. Okay, so let's go to this ratio. Okay, uh, I can see some trees out there. Uh, so there, I can see acute angles there. So how we are going to classify according to this angle? What type of uh, triangle is that? It's an acute angle triangle. Hmm. Then if it have a right angle, what do you mean by that? Then it's called a right angle triangle. If it have an obtuse angle, that means it's an obtuse angle triangle, right? Yes, you're correct. Okay. Thank you, hope you enjoyed our project. As you all know, triangles are seen in day-to-day -day lives in many instances and is used in architectural designs and is the strongest shape. Now it's time for Gate Aids to present our touchable object based on colors and triangles. Purposes. So during this time, this gate wasn't found and nobody even knew about it. So like, as I told you before, they were going to build a reservoir in Madurai and it was done from a Canadian loan. So Canadian engineers came for design and construction. So after they came, like they did all the geotechnical researches and they took satellite images and they like after they after all they decided to build the reservoir between the Kandigal mountain and the Danigal mountain. So like they started construction short after. So then after they started construction, they started digging the selected area. So when they were digging, they found this Lewis gate in the exact place. So that means uh, there was a tank in the early past, but now we can't see it. But the only really remaining is this Lewis. So this Lewis is really important because it's opening, they are triangular, so if you think that they use a square or a rectangle, it would there's more chance of being damaged. So because they use triangles, uh, the load and the pressure coming from the reservoir, it's, dis uh, it's distributed nicely. So, uh, so after that, the Canadian engineers, they were also so amazed about this creation. They even saluted near the Madurai Reservoir as an honour for the ancient technicians. So later, the new Madurai Reservoir they were going to build, uh, they built that a little behind this place. Yes, uh, so the, uh, this gate uh, was, uh, it is confirmed that it was built in the 1st century BC um, by the carbon dating done by the US. And the founding king is unknown. 
but uh, we can we have what guesses are that it could be made by king gotakannathisa because it was built in the first century or it could be built by the uh, king mahasen because he built a tank called mahadara galagopi and it wasn't found but it could be the madurai reservoir yeah? so um, speaking of, about its dimensions it's 219 feet high and 30 feet wide and compared to the other ancient places in found in sri lanka it has some unique features uh, like uh, the massive uh, stone slabs enclosed in an uh, arch shaped construct uh, structure and in, in its center of it on the right side wall there is a drawing of dancers um, but sadly only pictures uh, of this uh, artwork remains because um, some really contest who thought there was treasure inside this gate um, blew it up uh, with pa another part of the gate so they also has a map so let's see what it is so this is a map of the mahavir river the mahavir river starts from the hotan place then it passes through gampola peradeniya kandi and then it comes to the victoria reservoir the randani garan rantambe reservoirs then it comes to the mini anika from there uh, two water canals are divided the left bank canal and the right bank canal so from the right bank canal many reservoirs get water and the last reservoir getting water is the madurai reservoir so this louis gate is kept a little in front of this new madurai reservoir Salutation uh, given for this gate by the Canadian officers is an excellent example of how much respect these amazing creations deserve. So we hope you learned something new and enjoyed. I am Tinoli. I am Devsana, and we are from Grade Eight. Thank, Thank you. you. the triangular lesson by using this triangular carnival so as you know there are three types of triangles first one equilateral triangle second scaling triangle third isosceles triangle so in the equilateral triangle there are three equal sides and in the scaling triangles all three are not equal and in the isosceles triangle only two are equal similarly so this is a ferris wheel and this ferris wheel has 12 equilateral triangles and some equilateral flanks and this is the foot court and each roof has seven equal isosceles triangles and each and all together there are 28 isosceles triangles and there are some equilateral roof flanks imagine This is animal circus, and uh, there are six equilateral triangles, and uh, in the bottom there are two isosceles triangles, and uh, this is a merry-go-round, and uh, there are four equilateral triangles uh, generally. So uh, there's an important fact: the triangle is the most important, most uh, strongest uh, shape in the world. And here are bumper cars. As you can see, this one is made of a isosceles triangle, and this one is made out of a equilateral triangle. And uh, do you know how the triangle name is made up? Uh, so in this triangle, there are three angles. So uh, it's triangle, triangle. Uh, so the interior angle of a triangle is 180 degrees. Thank you. Hope you enjoy. So, uh, we are from grade eight four. Generally, I'm Sinara. I'm Himansha. I'm Sinali.
Hello everyone, so today this is going to be our maths presentation about triangles. Do you know who introduced triangles to us? Yes, Kashmi. Chinese mathematician Jia Xian devised a triangular representation for coefficient in the 11th century. It is known that the Greek mathematician Pythagoras was the first one to deduce facts about right angle triangle. There is one shape favorite among architects, the triangles, the strongest shape shape that has strong base and provide immense support. Now, let's talk about transmission towers. Yes, and me. The, the topic of transmission towers built to facilitate the mobile phone service is not well. And some people of the opinion that mobile transmission towers are waiting in the country. Mobile phone transmission towers were built not only in Sri Lanka but also in other countries. Two or more decades ago, the world saw a completely different technology. Do you know the triangle is the strongest shape? Yes, and then me. When engineers build structures, they want to make sure that the structure can bear weight. In fact, they don't want the structure to be fell down. Fun fact, in the past, mobile phone transmission towers were built on high mountain tops. The shape that can bear weight very well is the triangle. We are from 85 class and I'm Yan and me. I'm Vidalshi. I'm Kashmir. I'm Lithuvi. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Hope you learned something new. We are here to present some interesting facts about triangles. So today, for our special triangle carnival, we have an invited guest. Can anybody guess who it is? Um, no, who is it? Our special guest for our triangle carnival is Mr. Triangles. Hi everyone, nice to meet you. Hi Mr. Triangle, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Okay, so without further ado, let's move on to our triangle carnival. So the triangle carnival is made by the strongest shape and my favorite, the triangle. So first we have the Ferris wheel, uh, Ferris wheel and made entirely by popsicle sticks. Fact, did you know that Mr. George W.G. Ferris Jr. is the inventor of the Ferris wheel? And Mr. Triangle, I also heard that when we are at the top of the Ferris wheel, we feel more lighter than we are at the bottom. Yes, that's true. Okay, so next we have the Lowell building. The Lowell building is built by the Chinese American architect IMP. The proportion for the Lowell building was taken by the famous pyramids of Giza and was really hard to make. Fact, did you know that Mr. IMP lived to the age of 102? Oh boy, he must have been an amazing grandpa. So last but not least, the merry round made with the help of teamwork. Oh, I've never been to a triangle carnival. This triangle carnival was the best carnival I've ever gone to. Um, is it fine if I ask some questions? Of course, why not? Does anyone know who invented the triangle? Mm, no, who is it? It is Miss Jia Shen from China. Well, I am Chinese. Ni hao. So, can anybody guess how old do you think Mr. Triangle is? Probably a thousand. 1,500? No, he's 2,000 years old. Yes, I'm very, very old. Name some instances where we can find triangles. Maybe the telecommunication towers, bridges. So can anybody guess what is the most strongest triangle in the world? Is it the equilateral triangle? Yeah. And there's one more triangle. What do you think that is? Is it the isosceles triangle? Yeah, it's the isosceles triangle. Yes, those two are my naughty cousins. Okay, so that's the end of the Triangle Carnival. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. I'm Himandi Rajapaksha. Indurihan Pangamut. And I'm Kendall Kirdhanan. And I'm Ishini Samanakur. 
Thank you. Thank you. Saijia. Now we have come to the end of the program. And I would like to state that through the project we've experienced, we have learned something way beyond the normal classroom. So with that, we'd like to thank the principal, Mrs. Nilam Diyalvis, for this opportunity. And especially our math teacher, Mrs. Damika Nagaratna. And our staff teacher for the guidance and encouragement. I can assure that many more of this lesson of this nature can be shared to you in the near future.